Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we're pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. You can find all of our content at rebelloveshow.com, YouTube, Stitcher, iTunes. We're also syndicated on J Rev and Voluntary Virtues. I am Rob Mathias. And I am Joel Valenzuela. And Dude. I am Shire Dude. Also known as Andrew, I guess. <laughs> Andrew Viga Viga Viga. Yeah, I, I can't even say my last name. Of Emilio. And today we have a very special guest by the name of Andre Rosa. Oh, that was a good accent. Hey, I fake <laughs> it. I'm, I, I, you fake it till you make it, right? <laughs> How's it going, Andre? It's going oh. all right. It's, you know, it's all right. Now, <laughs> to what? I think the what the whole world deserves to know is, is that indeed a Lamassu ATM on your, on your Bitcoin shirt. ATM on your yeah. shirt? No, it's it a, looks like it. it. No, it's, 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 uh, it's a shirt that represents... Uh, how I truly feel inside, which is uh, a robot uh, that Bic- lost his lost his, uh, his 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 heart. I was gonna say, is it because Bitcoin's down right now? Oh, dude, no, that's good for me. I want to buy a whole Bitcoin. Yeah, it drops big, huh? It's like in yeah. the five. And drops. I sing "Sail" by AWOL Nation, but I sing it S A L E. Sail. Straight up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm not even. Sure. I don't know that song well enough to do so a anyways, proper parody. I want to talk about uh, last Friday night. Friday night was pretty awesome. Where were it you was last? Night? It was badass. It was, uh, yeah. It was, uh, oh man, it was. That was epic. Yeah, epic. with the failures, it was still, it was still amazing. Especially the. I, mean, I think the most. I, I mean, I hope you're gonna show video on this podcast because I think the most amazing experience and part of the reason why. Uh, I'm doing what I'm doing is 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 seeing what 20 20 no there's about 20, 30, 30 of us 30 30 surrounding time. surrounding the police who are trying to uh, arrest this guy and literally like Will is just giving him it's like you don't have to say anything you know here's here's a card <laughs> you know it was it was incredible it was absolutely incredible I have all my footage that I took that's on uh, YouTube channel of uh, YouTube.com slash Free Manch Raw. That's all the video that I took there. But, yeah, he was pulled over for, what, just honking, right? That was, I, I that's what so. I heard. I missed, I missed that part. I missed the pullover part. That's what yeah. everyone was saying. Yeah. Yeah. But the, I've never I, – I took a picture of, like, everyone, like, you know, 15, 20 people just, like, holding up cameras and cell phones, all videotaping the police all at the same time. It was, like, this epic, magical, like – Outnumber, they're outnumbered like you know five to one, and just seeing them like not knowing what to do with that many I know, people. Man. Let me uh, let me just say because I know I don't want to talk about it, but that is that is exactly that is exactly that is exactly want what I wanted. Just just filmed from a different angle. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. that, now for Friday night A was my uh, six month anniversary here, so it was a fitting celebration of my anniversary i couldn't have asked for a better six month anniversary in the free state than that night and now is exactly a reason why i moved oh wonderful yeah, yeah just to go. see something like that happen how much did you enjoy friday night andrew oh man well i i did enjoy it obviously but i wasn't at the checkpoint i was in north carolina visiting family oh that's so yeah cute. how did that What's turn out the, wait sorry wait are, you, wait are you from north carolina no i'm from california right so about two south years Carol- before south california yeah about two years before i moved here my dad moved with his family his wing of the family to north carolina so i haven't seen him since then so it's really cool yeah and yeah. how does he how does he take your whole being a complete lunatic moving up to New Hampshire I, whole thing. You know, I, I, he's, has he seen uh, Dogefest? He's pretty supportive. I, I'm not sure whether or not he's watched all of the Shire Dude episodes at ShireDude.com. We can hope the Spaghetti Monster he hasn't. <laughs> I think he's seen bits and pieces because he did at one point call me Shire Dude. And I was like, wait a minute, we haven't talked about this. Like, you know, and um, I, think I'm, I think I'm getting to him, though. I think I'm kind of breaking through. We were talking about anarchy uh, for a while. We actually watched a, a whole Tom Woods speech. Wow. Together. Wow. Together, which very was romantic. It was a very touching moment. We were watching some Milton Friedman clips too, but speaking of which, tomorrow yeah. is Milton first. <laughs> Neither of us. <laughs> Tomorrow's Milton Friedman's birthday and Americans for Prosperity is having a breakfast thing at Murphy's Diner at seven thirty eight in the AM. Just oh, yeah. throwing that out there. I'm going there. It's free free food. Wait, what what time is this? Seven thirty eight. You think they'll pay uh, for our breakfast in Bitcoin? We should definitely talk about that when they're when we're there. Yeah, they should be paying for all that in Bitcoin. That'd be legit. They have the Bitcoin. That's Wait, the d- real. Does AFP have Bitcoin? 
That's uh, a good question. I know the Koch brothers probably do, but AFP probably does not. Yeah. They should be fully operating. Rich people Bitcoin. love them some Bitcoin, I'll tell you. Who doesn't love Bitcoin? You know Bitcoin? why? Because rich people are smart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well. They didn't get rich being stupid. And so, <laughs> of course, they just have they, they diversify their investments. Even Peter Schiff, who's all, oh, Bill Go- Bitcoin's Ponzi scheme, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> then he goes and buys a bunch. Right. Just because he doesn't want to be. You know, caught high and dry. Wait, did he buy Bitcoin? Oh, yeah. He, that was like all over the news after he had that big throwdown about Bitcoin. Yeah. Then it's like, there he goes and buys a bunch. Well, you guys know Tim Draper, the uh, the Six Californias guy? Yeah. You know the yeah, whole proposal yeah, yeah. to split up Six Californias? It's a great idea. He, they should, he it. ended Instead up. split up California, they should just leave the union, but nonetheless. It's a great idea. Yes, yeah. But he ended up getting all of the stolen Silk Road Bitcoins. Did you hear about that? Oh, the the rat, not rat, but they they were um doing an auction. Auction. For a, yeah. He's the one who got all of them. When I thought was that all the um <laughs> was that all the Bitcoin from that was like in um like the petty cash wallet? It or was in like, escrow on the Silk Road. Okay, yeah. that's not all of it. That's just well, yeah, no, that's just that's the, the stuff, stuff that, that they've got. They're, they they yeah. they're holding on. Don't they have like his wallet, but they don't have access to it? Dread Pirate Roberts, isn't I that the think, case? They yeah. don't they don't have the keys. Well, they can't in. compel him to give their the password. Yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. Except well, they didn't ask for the the power of Christ to compel them. <laughs> the body of Christ. Yeah. Now th- that actually came up in a Bitcoin meetup with a few others. We we're talking about security and about paper wallets and about speci- like passcodes. About what if you have something that like if your heart stops beating, <laughs> then your Bitcoin gets transferred to some other wallet and stuff like that. And and then the thing is, well, what if you're supposed to be like what if you have to give up your uh, your your private key under pressure when you're being tortured or something. And one of the people there was like, believe me, if we are being tortured, I think losing our Bitcoins is the least of our problems. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, that's... Those, those are wise words. Someone should make a uh, a parody of that with a Seinfeld scene with the, the ATM. Is anyone, am I too old for that? You know... Yeah, Look, you're old. You know what I'm talking about. Just I, I, I know Seinfeld. What, what's Bosco. The, the Bosco, yeah. yeah. Bosco. You remember that no. one? No. Where no. to elaborate more than just a word. Oh, no. Basically, that was uh, that was um, George George uh, Costanza's password to get into his ATM, and he, they needed the password oh, to get inside the bank right. or something like that. Someone was, like, dying or something like that. He refused his to do it. His shirt was caught in the ATM slot, yeah. and the building was on fire. And yeah. he, they're like, what's your code, man? Because this was the last card in there. And he's right. like not about to tell them. Someone right. should make a Bitcoin. That was a great that. episode. Right. Yeah, someone, there was another episode too about where Kramer guesses his password. That was the same episode, yeah. Kramer it, totally guessed it, it o- in it like Oval a minute. Scene? Yeah. And then you change it to something else. Yeah. And remember, he's like. He was guessing like all sorts of chocolate products and he got it somewhere. It was crazy. It was pretty, it was amazing. It was very he Kramer. He psychologically broke George down yeah. bit by bit. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You're a weak man and all this. So, so that's a DUI checkpoint. Great yes. stuff. Great stuff for the DUI yeah. checkpoint. So, My favorite thing about DUI checkpoints is that it always leads to Seinfeld references. <laughs> <laughs> Just everything does. Now, I think what's cool is at the end of the night, Rob and I went to the diner, the Red Barn Diner, not the Red Arrow. Some red something diner. Yeah, that was the red first barn. time I've ever gone to that one. Right? Yeah, I didn't know yeah. they were 24 hours. What do you, what do you th- it's not 24 hours. They were, yes, they are. They were there. That, they were 24 hours that night. They were n- half they were the not, week. They are. They were not always twenty four hours. Well, as yeah. of now, as of Friday, they're twenty four hours, like half the week. Oh wow! So now it's an alternative to the shit arrow diner. <laughs> the shit, it's, it's not a shit arrow. I like. I like. The, it, I, I like it the red too. Arrow. I it, that was just what Kurt started calling it when he got bad service I, one time. I also enjoy s- amounts of grease in my face. Oh yeah. Um, but I think the red barn is actually not that bad. Yeah, they're both they're both comparable. I would say twenty four hour. Uh, the twenty four, the airport diner though. Is, I think is it really? I thought it's not twenty four hours. It's anymore. not anymore. <laughs> that you know that is a big issue in New Hampshire. Is I'm used to like everything being open all, all the time. The time. Yeah. And what is that? You like can go grocery shopping any time of the, the day. Morning yeah, if you wanted to. Yeah, that's yeah. my jam right there. <laughs> and now like n- like go like nothing's open. Nothing. Yeah, that's yeah. that's one thing that you know for the viewers at home. Uh, that's that's an interesting thing about New Hampshire is. There is no city. I'm this sacrificing is, we, late night shopping for freedom, people. Exactly. <laughs> we are in the metropolitan center of the state of New fucking Hampshire right now. We are, and the, there we is are like, the biggest town. Yes. The and there is town of New Hampshire. <laughs> and there's just nothing. Like there's no there's one twenty four hour thing. There's no twenty four hour coffee shop, which really bugs uh, me. Yeah, yeah. Dunkin' Donuts should be open twenty four hours for God's they, sake. There are but they're drive through. Here's the thing. I want to be able to when I get the insomnia at two, three in the morning, I want to just go out with my little 
you know, tablet and go get some midnight writing done, right? And I can't do that, and it, it pisses me off. I can do the hang out in the corner of the Seven Eleven. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I can hang out the quilt for that, but then you get shamed for whatever having for cupcaking in the room. Cupcaking. Yeah. Is that what? You, What's wh- cupcaking? Have you cupcaked me? Uh, I don't know what cupcaking is. I don't. Sounds pretty kinky though. Cupcaking is a verb that means using your. It means using your phone. I right? don't know where it, it derived from or started from, but I yes, you believe correct. it's derived on Urban Dictionary. If, if you're in a social situation and you just start looking at your phone, yeah. Yes. Oh my God, that's Tuck. Tuck is a cupcaker. Extraordinary. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm kind of Tuck cupcake all the time. You know. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, new I think word. I'm glad. I, I'm glad I learned a new word. Cupcaking. Cupcaking. Yes. Well, now speaking of the whole, the way the c- city and the whole state is just <laughs> podunks, Phil. Ha- what's it like being? Because you're from the People's Republic of San Francisco, is that correct? Uh, I s- I grew up in the People's Republic of San Francisco, and then I grew up in uh, uh, L.A. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's> same difference, <laughs> same deal. Yeah, so ha- that must be quite an adjustment being out here in the boondocks yeah. for you. Uh, I, I, I still haven't gone over it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, join the club there. So what, is the, what do you think is the hardest part that just missed the void in your life that's missing from back home to here? Like the, I know because we talk about how great New Hampshire is, and it's a great state. We talk about the movement, about liberty, all this great stuff, but and not everything is just like zero sum. Sometimes you gain something, but you lose something. And so what was, what's the for you, the personal price of moving out here. Oh man, you you, you got to the you, uh, you got you, to a core. Yeah, uh, that's <laughs> what I do. I'm good at my the root. Job. Do you miss ethnic, the root. ethnic people uh, at all? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have to admit. Uh, so uh, it is ethnic it people. Drives, aren't I, I, it drives me absolutely insane dude. how white New Hampshire is. Um, I, I never I never thought I would hate white people so much. I didn't think so either. <laughs> um, and it, the thing is, I most people think I'm white. <laughs> and I didn't. You act kind of white. I used sometimes. to think I was, and then I came here, and I'm like, oh no, I'm not. <laughs> you know? No, it's awful. I mean, I, 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 I think I do a little gig and dance anytime I see a Vietnam person walking down the street. I think the <laughs> correct <laughs> word is Vietnamese. Oh whatever. I, I, I'm not, I'm not good with them. Uh, with racial them, slurs, with political correctness, <laughs> or with words in general. <laughs> yeah, well, that's. I mean, it's been, it's kind of been hard for the dating pool for me because. This is the first year of my life, right? 2014 that I've ever dated. Like ever? That I've, that I've ever dated a <laughs> white girl. This is the first year in my whole life that I've ever gone out with a white girl. Whoa. And I've gone out with a couple now. And I um, uh, I, I don't know we, what that's you like. Can, we can't go this line in question because like, I will totally start dissing on Manchester, New Hampshire. <laughs> no, seriously, go there. You know why? This is not a Free State Project shill. Show. We'll talk about the pros and cons. Yeah, we'll talk about the pros and cons. Uh, we talk about the what pros we're sacrificing all the time. to be here. Yeah, because I have some things to add to this list too. It's not just you bitching. I mean, I, I'll just say I got a pretty good, uh, uh, uh what's the word, uh, cross section of New Hampshire when I went to across the state to do my drag queens and covered bridges calendar. Um, yeah, you know, I'm from you know from California. It's everything's a little bit a little bit more open minded. Uh, a little bit more relaxed, not as conservative culturally, um, uh, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I I want the quality of people to improve here. <laughs> well, we just yeah. gotta get more of them to move here. Um, I'm not gonna lie that like even it gets it gets. I have seen it across the spectrum get. Because everyone here knows each other, it's just so small that everyone you people yeah. known each other since high school that. The, the drama that happens here is probably some of the most petty drama I've ever seen in my life. Uh, like the Keen, the Keen stuff going on uh, between the Scott Free Keen and the Keens. That's all petty shit. That is yeah. all petty shit. Politics, you go into the politics situation, all petty bullshit. This is like, this is, this is, this is, uh, you, you, when you live in a small town, you got a lot of small town thinking. <laughs> yeah, I know that. My, um, I sort of grew up in a smaller than a small town. So I know what, what that's like, where everyone knows everyone's business, and where one of the locals, one of the neighbors, his name was I forget his real name, but everyone just called him like to his face for the rest of his life, La Perra, or the female dog, because yeah. that's what they caught him with one time, and then it, that's what they call him forever after. What you do know? you mean caught him with? Caught him, 
He has, he has sex with the dog? Yes, yeah, so he got caught. Because, yeah, this is the Mexican. Wait, hold, on, hold on, That's deserved then. Oh, yes, it is. That's the Mexican boondocks. And they just called him that, like, forever once they caught him. And my dad was called Lepe, or the orphan calf, because he was the youngest of five, born five years younger than the second youngest. And he's just that orphan calf that, you know. And he's 60-something fucking years old now, and his siblings still call him orphan. Hey, what's going, orphan? You know, that's still, instead of his first name, they call him Orphan. And it's just that whole small town mentality that just, yeah. it's hard to get get around. Right. And that's one reason I'm in Manchester as opposed to other places here, because at least that's diluted No, that's the same bit. reason why my mom keeps calling me uh, my failure since I was three. Oh, really? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I thought they were gonna about to have a heart, heart. Like a heartfelt moment right yeah. here. You're just fucking yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a nickname? Did you uh, have yeah, one? well, what did they call you? Uh, Jabba the Hutt, because I used to be fat. Oh, wow. do, do they still call you that? They can't really, because it's, it's hard to make that connection now. But Well, they could call you uh, Jabu. <laughs> well, sometimes they still call me Gordito, or a little fat guy. <laughs> but Gordito, yeah. That like, Gordito. I mean, I don't look that way anymore. Not most days. Not unless I've been to the King Buffet and just porked up. That day I was a little bit. Well, it's a buffet. You're supposed to try everything. What about you, Rob? you have any nicknames back home? Um, no. Well, I lived in a – see, for me, like like Andre, I lived in a very populated area. I lived in Chicago. the south side of Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. You know, so like – well, though I did uh, – I spent every summer um, vacationing for two months out of every year in the UP of Michigan, which is like Lancaster area like population wise so I, i'm used to like not having that many people because i, I kind of had both worlds like a rural life and a uh suburban like i'm used to both but at the same time i spent most of my life in an urban area hmm. it was really it was always a cultural shock going from there and back because we go there every summer in august so you come back and it's like oh my god there's a lot of people like that, that was always a shock for me as a kid because I got uh, acclimated to like no people and an hour drive to the nearest city, which was a nearest city, quote unquote, was a city because they had one red light. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what that's I got, like. I got culture shock from uh, from L.A. going to visit New York. <laughs> I got a little claustrophobic. Like New York City? Yeah, New York, New York City. Yeah. yeah, because L.A. is pretty damn packed, but it's not like New York City packed. It's not high like New York well, City. Well, LA's spread out. Yeah. It's not, yeah. It's not an island. It's a valley. Like, you know, again, I came from Phoenix, right, right before coming here, and that's, what, three, four million people in the metro area. It's a, it's a sizable city. But it's it's basically like Manchester that never ends. It's it's the uh, small town as Manchester. It's, it's it slow. Just, it's it low. has less high rises than Manchester. And no, no. Uh, well, I can't uh, believe it. Oh, well, yes, it does. Uh, no. There's Phoenix? Well, Yes, Phoenix. I'll show you pictures, man. There's like none. And besides that, like at least here there's a lot of two story or three story buildings like the one we're in right now. In Phoenix there's like zero. They're all one floor. It's there's like four in the whole I don't know. It's, you think it's, you think that's a heat reason? Cuz heat rises or like stayed low to the ground. I think it's a hmm. price of real estate thing that there's just cheap land everywhere. Eventually it'll, so get, just, it'll get built up eventually. Well, if it's cheap land everywhere, why won't you build up? Well, it's because you, it's easy to just – you oh, don't need to do cheap, it. It's cheaper to build far and wide. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's cheaper to spread out, and you just – so it's just the, the concrete jungle that never ends. Dude, Arizona is one of my favorite uh, – well, except for the whole, like, uh, Gestapo immigration stuff. Uh, visually is one of my favorite states. Yeah, it's, it's, fu it's really great to visit. Just don't stay very long. Uh, 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 like wait, Sedona. Like, Are you going to say Sedona? I love Sedona. See, I knew it. I knew it. Everyone goes to Sedona. It's like Arizona's awesome, man, and you don't live no, in like no, West no, Phoenix, no, no, the no, West no, Side no, Cholo. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. <laughs> I, I have, I've been, I have friends in Flagstaff. I've been to Phoenix. I've been to Grand Canyon. I, I know, I know. I, I Flagstaff is nice too, though. Um, it's I like also, you've been to the nice places. I also been to, you know, uh, Antigone used to live in Prescott. That's again the rich, nice places. Okay, and you Sedona, realize, you realize Prescott, I, and you Scottsdale, Flagstaff. Those are the places worth being at. Flagstaff. Bisbee, too. This is all Bisbee. over my head. I have no idea about this. Those five the places. It's not one of those five places. You know, neighborhood it's a at all. Arizona. <laughs> Sorry. I've, I've lost your train of thought. I, I, know, I, know, <laughs> I know my West Coast. <laughs> so, Anyways, lack, of, lack of ethnic diversity. That's one big thing. Yeah, what else? It's huge. It's huge. I know. What else? 
Uh, what, what, uh, what else? Yeah, uh, about Manchester or I, I mean, yeah. you know, the pettiness is pretty bad. Um, I literally do believe I've gone to like I've had encounters, <laughs> so I've gotten kicked out of a couple of bars in Manchester, <laughs> and and I basically come to the realization is that that people here really love to be kings of their own shit mountain. Um, that's something I I've noticed. Small pond. Yeah, big fish in a small pond. You know, just uh, I don't know. And uh, you know, I used to, uh, dude. I'm a I'm a film guy. So like, uh, ever since I moved here, like you know, in L. A. You're constantly. I mean, it's you know, it's Hollywood. So you're constantly bombarded by like the new the new movies coming out. Be it from the whole range from indie to to mainstream. Here, I have I I have no idea because I have ad busters. On my on my on my yeah. on my computer, so I'm not getting pop ups on my computer, so I have no external per, uh, external influences. Well, you should go and like search out what movies you, sh- you should watch. Well, and that's whatnot. that's work. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Look, I've been here six months. I've only watched half of one movie, and that's it. And I haven't watched yeah, any TV shows. Wow. I mean, I mean, the next movie I want to see is the the new, the new Richard Linklater one, The Boyhood. Looks I have really no good. idea what that he is. He basically filmed he filmed him su- his son grow up for twelve years and oh, made, yeah, made a I whole about story that. arc based on that. Yeah, it sounds. Like I'm that. already crying just thinking of the concept. <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. Well, you know, I kind of, oh, uh, I didn't. This part of the state, at least, every the the coast seems a little bit different. And of course, correct me if I'm wrong, because you've spent more time there than I have. But there seems to be a little bit of a cultural backwater kind of feel, and. Well, you mean the rednecks? Yeah, or like just nothing but kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? No. I heard mudding was a thing for the first time like mudding. a week ago. Mudding, yeah. Yeah. That I was like, what the hell is mudding? That's a redneck thing, but that sounds pretty that kinky. Does sound, that sounds kind of fun, though. You have to admit, I probably wouldn't mind going mudding. We, we should go. We should go on a mudding trip one day. Experience with the locals. Live like a local. Dude, I would. I would actually. I. I'm. You always say yes to new experiences. But are we gonna? Are, are we gonna wear camouflage? Wearing rainbows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, like, I remember when I was living and working in D.C., I used to go to the – there was this one little um, cinema that, I used to, that always played, like, the Indian foreign movies and stuff. And I used to go there, take girls there, whatever, and it was – And not you know, watch and just make out? Well, no. I would actually go there to watch because they're fun movies. In fact, half the time when I go out with friends – They'd want to go like see scary movie or some bullshit like that, and so I would just say, "Screw you guys! I'm watching this one alone because you guys have shitty taste in movies." Hey, don't knock scary movie. Oh well, wait, no. I just did. Wait, hold on. Am, am, am I, is scary movie the the knockoff or is the, the knockoff the comedy? Yeah, the the yeah. It was the mock. Make, it was the mock like the making, mock film making yeah. fun of the actual good movie. Yeah, or like scary movie, date movie, all those kinds of like. Right. It's like just one. It's a sp- Scream, scream, scream. Yeah. I thought you were just saying scream. No, no, no. Scream no, no. is great. I'm just, it's like, they're like Tyler Perry at level. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's, I do miss like the coffee shops. There's two good coffee shops Lorraine. in Manchester. And one which, of them. Which ones? I'm curious Cap- to know your list. There's Cafe Lorraine, which is pretty good. You know, it it does the, its service as a little a, a real coffee shop, right? Yeah. And then there's City Cafe, which is right next. I to I was Murphy's. not impressed with City I Cafe. I haven't been to either. They're all well, right. you've never been to Lorraine. I haven't cafe been to Lorraine. Either. I go to I go to Baked. Really? Uh, uh, Baked is all right. Yeah, I mean, man, they're, they're not. It's not like a coffee shop. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Go try to, Lorraine. You will love Lorraine. Go to Cafe Lorraine. Well, I guess I just because I go I, I work in Portsmouth, so I just I never. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's Portsmouth great coffee. There's twelve Portsmouth. and a half coffee shops there for like one tenth the population. It's crazy. Yeah. There's yeah like right in down right down right in downtown. There's like a whole bunch. Why didn't Portsmouth become the hub of the Free State Project? It's not the hub of the Free State Project. No. Yeah. Why didn't it? Uh, it's expensive. Yeah. Uh, it literally. I actually when I moved here. Uh. Uh. I was like looking at places to live, and I wanted to move in Portsmouth, and I got in complete a huff because like like they were charging uh, uh, the same prices as LA to get like a one or two you know one bedroom in Portsmouth, and I was completely like I'm not fucking moving across <laughs> this fucking state to pay the same fucking prices I'm paying in metropolitan LA. I'm, I'm not fucking moving to Portsmouth. 
Now I wish I was was in Portsmouth because it's kind of a great. It's kind of it's yeah. Like, it's it's like, kind of worth it's, it. It's the it's the it's the it's the, it's the gem of of the whole stay. It's it's one. No, of I, the, I agree. Yeah, I still intend to move out next year if I can afford it. So let me just see. <laughs> well, then work on that first part. Yeah. Right? So what about you, Andrew? What did you miss leaving? Uh, leaving the leaving. Democratic People's Republic yeah, of California the, of the Congo. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, um, ethnic people, like, you know, like I mentioned before, um, yeah, you know, you don't, you don't think about the little things. You know, speaking of which, the Rebel Love pad right here, Rebel Love Show Studios, is going to be, like, the one place where you have the most concentration of ethnic minorities. In the <laughs> I state. always feel outnumbered. I'm, like, the only white guy sitting here right now. Oh, he oh, finally man. admits it on camera. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? I've been, I've been running no, but that seriously, uh, for a while. Outside, it, like out in a neighborhood here. Wait, are you actually German or something? Yes, I'm Persian. He's German. Persian. Matthias being the German word for Matthew. Anyway, so out in the neighborhood here, we got. Well, like, you're Iranian then. <laughs> He's a honky. That's what he is. Oh no, no, I'm Persian. I was just I mean, making that up. But white. Yeah. <laughs> go, go ethnicities. Anyway. So around in the neighborhood here, there's, like, a bunch of, like, Dominicans and Somalians and stuff like that. So, like, yeah, we, hear, we hear we some of the whiter shade, shaded people in the neighborhood, and that's the only place in the whole state you could probably say that about, and I love it. Yeah, because uh, Manchester is a uh, um, refugee. Uh, is, it, is, it, is it a refugee thing? Yeah, I think but it might it's be, not yeah. just Manchester. It's this very specific part yeah, yeah, of Manchester. Well, Manchester gets a lot of the refugees who come in it. Coming into the U.S. Yeah, I noticed there's a lot of that's interesting. Those kinds. That'd it, be great though, because maybe we can get like a little, uh, little, little Dominica, or D- Dominica Republic well, or something. It just it's it's weird for me. You know the the weird part for weird? me. The weird part for me isn't. I mean, it is weird having just so many white damn white people all over the place. I, no, I agree it. with that. But more than that, it's weird that there's like no Mexicans. That there's like fake Mexicans, like the Dominicans, right? <laughs> 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 and it's it's so funny thinking about it that way but like you know you're, you're from the southwest right and then there's like always the mexican population that are like you right. know the mostly in like the service jobs or you know landscaping and things like that or just their own little places and it's like yeah it's like my people i know the, they're and, they're a part of my understanding of of how life is supposed to be yeah. exactly and yeah. then you come here and the same piece they're like they're not right they're like something else. They look different. They 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 speak Spanish. They do the same stuff. They're they're you, you know where they're I just different. It's kind of I, it's messed up, man. Unfortunately, it's going down uh, with market basket. But that's where I feel rem- uh, reminding me of what life was like because you always go in the uh, market basket. And it's always a lot of, of different ethnicities in market basket. That's like we're like the biggest like uh, pool of all different uh, people. Like to me, that's where I always know it's the well, most non. That one on the Elm one. that you yeah. go to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. I'm used to like you know like everything you know. I was like, there's a, I can go from my old apartment and get uh you know Chinese and get you know Middle Eastern food or anything else under the sun like everything like there's always all these places i miss food i miss the food yeah. from there like there's the new indian place i know i tried it, it i it's loved not it. Bad. I was, I know, it i like it good. Yeah, yeah it was so, pretty good yeah yeah i enjoyed myself quite thoroughly yeah there's actually decent food on elm and uh i i uh, i have come to enjoy uh the 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 mess that is usa chicken no oh i yeah i love that stuff no i'm used i'm used fact, to you're making me hungry for some like that's, right that's now a, that's a cheat day that's a definitely a good cheat day i'm place. used to like good fried chicken places like uh oh i don't do their I'm, fried no i don't do their fried yeah their fried chicken what do you get bullshit. there i get their like euros or their sandwiches no have you tried g-spot the gyro spot, Yo. the gyro, oh, yeah, the yeah, gyro yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're really good. Yeah, those are good too. Now, do you like Republic? What? Republic. No, they're pre- your... they're pretentious and expensive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they're the, uh, the, yeah, the, I'll give you that. Their portions are way too tiny. I'm sorry, I'm I'm not paying. Like, I got a tiny salad there with like barely anything for like thirteen, fourteen bucks. Ooh. Yeah. I, I find I find I find I, I I can't stand that kind of pretentiousness. I had a good experience the several times I've been have, there. Have that attitude, but be cheaper, please. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the thing. As I ha- I've had a good experience because, again, I see the menu. I see, like, this is bullshit, and I find a way. I always locate the items on the menu that are going to give me what I want for the price I want. And so, like, I find – I've never been dissatisfied, even though yeah. I can understand why everyone else would be. They're, 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 I mean, well, I have a hard time 
eating there if I want to stick to my paleo diet. But How long have you been doing paleo? Uh, since 2012. So two years. Do you enjoy it? Uh, it's changed, changed my life. All right. <laughs> has, it made, has it made you slim down? Because I don't know what you look no, like I, before. No, I, I've, I've always had a... I've always had it. I've always. Well, if you've already been always been in shape, why are you doing paleo? Uh, because I used to get tired all the time. I used to be. I had major energy issues. Hmm. I used to take lots of naps. Well, um, like isn't a cat. isn't that very ANCAP of you though? Aren't ANCAPs down with naps? I thought. Where are you, why are you anti nap? Not this ANCAP. <laughs> you take an ANCAP nap. <laughs> ANCAP nap. <laughs> So Andrew, when are you going on your um, yeah the, the on uh, your no food diet Soylent. Soylent. on your vodka diet? Will you will you break paleo to try some Soylent with me when I get it in the mail? Yes. Okay, cool. Because I'm gonna get that like mid September from, from the Kickstarter. Um, like no, it's like they're they're shipping it out to people. Right, right. This is yeah. the Soylent Green from the Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. They had the Kickstarter. There was like vastly successful. And right, and that's Soylent. Yeah, I, I'll try I don't know. I watched the Vice video with the rats like running around <laughs> in the in the factory where they're making the Soylent. That I'm, made me I'm a little down. nervous. I'm not down for the Soylent. I, I like I like food. I actually like eating. I enjoy <laughs> going out to dinner and you know and yeah. ordering. Food. I like eating too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's. Well, I, you go ahead and, and well, enjoy your you, liquids. Yeah, like. I will, my dream is to be able to eat as much as I want and not get fat, not not be able to eat any more at all and still, like, not be scrawny. Like, I don't I, – it defeats the purpose. What's the point of living? I mean, let me put it this way. As soon as you go on that soil and dial, I'm going to hide all the guns around here. <laughs> Why? Cause, so he doesn't off himself, oh, you know, because then life's pointless. You know, actually, when I was That's a kid, a when I was a kid, I'd always say that uh, the job that I wanted when I grew up, I wanted to be a food inventor. And so <laughs> this project, it like spoke to me. That is such an awesome kid thing, you know? It spoke to me in a way because this guy invented a food, right? That's like never been done before. Like not like this. And uh, it, it really got to me on like, you know, my little kid level. Wow. Okay. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not down. I can't. I can't do it. Maybe have it as a backup in case, like you know. We'll try it. As, like, I mean, food storage, I'll like in the case of emergency. But I'll I see how long I, I live go. off of that. Yeah, I'll see how long I go on it, and then I might end up like doing like Food Friday or something. I don't know. You know, I I remember as a kid, uh, you know, working doing some food magic. I I know I did some concoction of like orange juice and toothpaste and. and uh, <laughs> And and like toothpicks or something. You ever try like <laughs> making peanut butter milk? You figure chocolate milk's delicious. <laughs> Why not peanut butter milk? It's not good, by the way, for the viewers at home. It's not. <laughs> don't make peanut butter milk. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's so pretty funny. Let's talk about uh, your campaign for office. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm interested in why, why why you're doing it. Say what? New Hampshire State Rep, right here. Whoop, whoop. What, 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 what are you gonna run as? I'm a uh, uh, state house representative of Hills Hillsboro County District <laughs> Eight. <laughs> you sure, you know this by heart, like where you're running at. I, dude, I have the worst memory ever. I'm just like, uh, maybe I'll need some bulletproof copy there. Uh, yeah, state house. Um, yeah, uh, it's gonna be a. Uh, What's your platform? Whatever you want it to be. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Is it more or less taxes? Uh, How about no taxes? Yeah, less taxes. You know, the the standard, you know, the standard stuff, you know, like uh, the, you know, pro-gay, pro-gay, LGBT. Uh, uh, pro-gun. Uh, pro-gun. Pro-pot. Pro-pot. Pro-coffee. 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 There you pro, go. You pro, got my, well. Pro-love. Pro-cat <laughs> spanking. Pro-cat spanking. Consensual. Yeah, you would, you, if it, consensual cat okay, spanking. Okay, consensual. Cat spanking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually I have a great Don't, don't bring a, the state between me and my cat, man. I have a great uh campaign video. I don't know if you guys saw it on, on Facebook, but um I <laughs> no. I need I need to edit it, but there's actually literally a a video of me climbing up what, twenty feet, twenty five feet to save a cat from a tree. <laughs> <laughs> and I so I plan to use that to like like Andre Rosa, State House rap. He'll save your cat. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That's excellent. Yeah. And then we're gonna come out with a mock camp, uh, like a hit piece that's like all black and white ad. It's like Andre Rosa says he's pro cat, but is he real? Yeah, spanking the yeah, cat, yeah. spanking ass <laughs> in slow motion, black and white. You know, <laughs> this is gonna ruin you. Know, not right for cats' asses. Not right for New Hampshire. <laughs> what? 
Oh man. So you're gonna edit that down? Uh if you need an editor I'm pretty saying. good. I do all of the Desert Links and the Rebel Up Show stuff. I, I, so. d- I do stuff too. So <laughs> I know. I'm just trying to like. Isn't he a film? T- you know, you do your own film and editing, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> In the Shire, everyone edits. Everyone. Yeah, everyone has some sort of camera. Or everyone a... filming me. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Everyone films. Not everybody edits. That's true. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, what, what is your is your is there a YouTube channel for you or content that you've made since you've been here? Um. Yeah. I, well, Besides, well, stuff that we can quote unquote well, that you want to discuss. I usually I usually post on Vimeo. Um. Uh. Vimeo com slash robot notes. Uh. But unfortunately. Some of that stuff uh, is uh, been taken down uh, by the man. B- no, by me, uh, <laughs> because I am running for state house. <laughs> <laughs> so you were having too much fun in a couple of those videos. Basically, well, you can see the gay dance off. Derek J and I, when I first got here, uh, this is December of 2011. We had a gay dance off. It was the Manch for the versus the Keniacs. Oh, I remember and that. Didn't, didn't the Manchkins win? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, that's the one thing. I, 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 was, I, was, I 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 was leading the crew, so we definitely won. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Derek tries pretty hard, you know. No, Derek's a great guy. I'm just better. <laughs> You're a better dancer. <laughs> yeah, or at least a gayer dancer. A gayer dancer. So you're yeah. gonna are you gonna win? Uh Do you have competition? I'll, I have too much competition. Um. We'll see. We'll see. I, I have I have some I have some uh you know you know I think by now you guys know that I don't fuck around and and I know when I take things seriously I, I go full gun ho. So yeah. I guess I gotta it's just a matter of uh am I gonna be am I gonna work myself to death and, and slip up from uh doing too many things at once. But I think I'm okay. Well I was gonna ask if you're worried about being outed. Out as what? What do you Walking think? By. A free stater? Yeah. I don't know. A lot. A lot of other of free staters running for a state house are worried about being uh, outed before the election. Well, technically, I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm not really a, a free stater. Um, I guess technically I am, but I did not come here uh, for the C- free state project. What did you I, come I, here for? I came here to run away from L.A. And Antigone was here. But then, but then, you know, I was here. And it was like, you know, I'm a libertarian anarchist person, so I was like, oh. Another tick, another tick on the on the on the on the, the ticker on the ticker. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So I, I mean, it's not completely. I did not move here for the Free State Project. You that mo- is an absolute true statement. You I mo- did not move here for the Free State Project. So you decided to escape I, here. Correct. It just it just so happened that Antigone moved here for the Free State Project, and well, I think a lot of people use the Free State Project as their form of escape from there. Yeah, I mean, I was I ran away, I escaped. Yeah, I, Andrew, I, where were you running from? <laughs> Tell us the truth. Oh man, um, the cops. That's what a good th- reason. They'll never find for. me. <laughs> 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 Except when you're fucking cop walking down Elm Street what? in front like of everyone. <laughs> I'm in disguise now. Yeah, yeah the hoodie. Guys. They never recognize guys, you. With the I've, hoodie. I've been in whiteface this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's that's a good one. Did Mind I s- blown. Did and I d- swallowed? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Seriously though, has anyone ever thought about that? Like, there's people who run. <laughs> that's like, like, yeah, like that's gonna work. <laughs> Sometimes it does, but I'm saying, like, <laughs> what if you actually did something dramatic? It's like, say you're a little skinny dude, you just get all big and fat, you change your facial hair, you get different colored contacts, you get some like tattoos in places you didn't, or remove the ones you had. Facial reconstructive surgery, dude, that's, the that's, works. Yeah, or that's just, the just just get an ethnoplasty. Dude, that's what you method know? acting's all about. You oh, just yeah. got, you just, you just got to be committed. Yeah, like, what are you method acting right now? No. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. This it's is like, you. This what is if, like, what if you're the most like, like beefy, like tough, you know, New Englander uh, kind of like tr- trashy t- sort of rednecky guy, then you just decide to go like full, classy flamer, <laughs> right? And you just like <laughs> you lose a bunch of weight, like get fashion sense and start like, you know, and you're doing. Just like, hey, girlfriend. Yeah, you just but you just you become that person to the point where you can't switch off anymore, and then like no one knows. It's like I can't be that guy. He's like clean shaven. He's all like fabulous. He has no tattoos. He's got a good fashion sense. Like you know he, 
He eats quinoa all the time. I mean, gosh. Like, so, man, don't really be hating on quinoa. I love <laughs> quinoa. I don't, I'm on the opposite diet of you, so. Wait, what's quinoa? Quinoa, it's like a. Uh, it's hell. It's kind of like rice, but it's not. Oh. That's the best way to describe it's it. It's kind of a rice. It's delicious. But not as fat. It's like rice. My it's absolutely delicious. I love I love. <laughs> wow, I like rice. Yeah, I like rice, too. Who doesn't like rice? I don't think anyone. <laughs> who doesn't? Yeah, everyone loves rice. <laughs> it's the rice quisition up in here now. <laughs> you accepted rice as your lord and savior. Speaking of rice, so I'm thinking about how many state reps we've got running, right? Because, you know, I'm over at Free State Project headquarters, and we're all like, ha, 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 ha. Granted State doesn't have any idea what's coming to it. Anyway, I was thinking, I what if we that. did – a state. Oh yeah, they're they're they they're, know. they're freaking out. Yeah, they are, they're they're, li- they're literally chicken littling the shit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. What if what if we got going like a state rep calendar? Like we have, you know, we've had other calendars come out recently. We could do a calendar of all the state reps that are running that are free. I don't think some of them would want. You know what? That's gayer than my drag queen's calendar. <laughs> 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 like I I definitely want to see Mark Warden in like a, a January position. You know, January position. <laughs> But he's not running anymore. Oh yeah, yeah that's he's true. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, he's, his is um. He's done his time. Well, he's just holding off until he runs for governor. Straight up, that's maybe what, that's what we knows. say. But yeah, that would be a very fun calendar about the the fun free state raps. And right, like got, after like, the elections, obviously. Yeah, William Kostrick and his like, like on the beach looking behind with his thong <laughs> and stuff, and then like <laughs> Puerto Rican booty. Right. This and is then, this is swimwear. This is swim swimwear calendar. Yes, definitely. Oh yeah. D- do we even have to say that? Who else? Who else is running? Well, this guy right yeah, but here. I know, but who else? Else, who are you gonna out? Uh, or do you, or should I th- you? I mean, I mean, people who I mean, Tim O'Flaherty is running. Uh, he's definitely out. Uh, yeah, he's definitely out. Sabrielle's running. She's out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is Caitlin running? No. Um. Uh. Brandon Ross is running. Yeah. Um. I, I mean, this, there's a whole. Uh, you know, Philip Harris. He's running. He's a Manchester Republican. Um, I'm I'm in, in the inner circle, boys. How many? Wait, I, wait, know, wait. I know some Politico things. Well, are you, are you running as a Republican or a Democrat? Uh, I'm running as a Republican. Oh. Now, how many free staters are running as Democrats this time around? I have no idea, actually. I know the total is supposed to be about 36, right? Democrats or just in general? In general, the total. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I say that's heard. a hell of a lot of Democrats. <laughs> yeah, thirty. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, somewhere between thirty-six and fifty is definitely is definitely something somewhere oh, in there. Accurate. Yeah. Well, let me put it this way: I think that in general we're running. This is going to be a huge year. I'm starting to feel it in the air. Mm-hmm. Like well, everybody, everybody's facing everybody's facing. Pri- well, I'm not facing a primary, but I'm facing a congested uh, general election. I mean, uh, Contest- well, w- contested or congested? Well, a little bit of both. Column A, column B. Um, I definitely have to take some pills after this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Will, swallow Will, or suppository. Well, well, uh, well, you know, he, his his uh, his his Repub- his primary is filled. There's like three or four people running. Um, it's there's a uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I know I'm just focused on a general election, but um, uh, in my I mean in my election, I, I, there's basically one person who is guaranteed to get that one slot and so there's basically three people running for one slot in my in my district that is not good odds uh, yeah. especially this is my first year and 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 to be frank i i i, I don't want to make like being a politician isn't something uh i want to actually do as a living <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's more of an experience thing i want to i want to experience it well i just hope there was uh any of the free stairs that go in there i just want them to like Stop as much as they can and just cause chaos in the state yeah, house. Monkey wrench it. Yeah, yeah. That's all. That's all I want to see them do. In all honesty. Well, I mean, you're not. You're gonna get a lot of resistance towards that. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> H- hence, hence, uh, hence, uh, welcome to the world of peer pressure. Uh huh. And 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 influence. I mean, you're gonna. You're. It's uh, easier said than done to to throw a monkey wrench. Basically, what ends up happening is is that. Uh, people don't take you seriously, and uh, you end up just making a fool of yourself. Really? Uh, yeah, of course. It depends on who you're making a fool. I mean, of. you have to be you. You you you. It's not. So what you're trying to say is that Ian Freeman is not going to win the governorship uh, primary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not going to win. 
Well, it would be funny if he did, and then we all have to like eat crow. Call him governor. governor. I would. Abso- I've called him governor. I would a absolutely times. call Ian Ian governor. Governor. I, I I would I would I would actually have a little bit of New Hampshire nationalism towards Ian as governor. I would call him. Not Lord. gonna lie. I'd call him my Lord and Savior. Peace <laughs> be upon him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just just keep that going. But well, I think it's on a more general note. I think it's going to be a huge year for us. I'm feeling it in the air. I'm starting to get my stuff I'm, I'm starting there's, to really like, like a wave building work hard because there's definitely a lot of momentum this year there's definitely like there's i, I think with like there's been a lot of movers this pa- over this course the past year and there is it's uh, uh there's we're hundreds, hitting, we're hitting, we're hitting 500 or more we're hitting a sweet spot right now so yeah well that's the thing is like i've noticed you know the electoral thing is going huge uh definitely now the free state project with 501c3 nonprofit status could open a, up a world of grants, right? A world Hopefully. of things to do to trigger the move, right? Wait, who is? The Free State Project. Oh, right. Achieved the whole thing that we're... Like, yeah, I mean, they could get <laughs> buckets of money, right? Yeah, there, and so that's even more people moving out. And just, I get this general sense that, you know, all our dreams are going to come true, and Vermin Supremes can give us all those ponies he promised this this year. Ian Freeman is governor, and Vermin Supremes president. My God, what go. a world that would be! Yeah, it would be beautiful. <laughs> I am very much looking forward to the uh, presidential primary season in New Hampshire. It seems like a gold mine for just video content. Oh yeah, yeah, or just just go up and. It's pretty fun. Oh it yeah, is, it is. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Um, during during the primary last time around, it was like I don't know two in the morning. Uh, they didn't use the footage, but like I was at Red Arrow or something, and like they asked some reporter asked me, flashing a big huge camera and light in my face, and I'm like by myself at Red Arrow, and and like they asked me who you're who you're voting for, and I said Ron Paul. For Ron Paul, because he won't kill brown people. Oh, <laughs> that is awesome! <laughs> <laughs> Candid moment of awesomeness right yeah. there. I was like, I just, I just like, I was just like, that's like he's gonna end the wars, <laughs> like. But he, uh, they definitely didn't use that. <laughs> they should have, because that's like gold, right? Right. It, it's for either side, whether you're pro or against. It's pretty gold. It's a candid statement right there. You know, it always pisses me off. When, I mean, like, that's. I mean, honestly, that's the. That is the re- – like, uh, you know, I'm a libertarian for all kinds of reasons, but, I mean, for me, for me, it's always been about the – like, it's always about the wars. The wars yeah. and the military-industrial complex are some of the most atrocious things ever. Like, I would I – would, I, would, I, would, I would not mind living in a socialist state if, 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 the, if the other they side of the coin was like, people. right, we're going we're gonna to stop being a, an American empire. All troops are coming home. Like I said, you know what? Bring on, bring on, you know, as uh, bring on Obamacare. You know, fine. Like at least we're not murdering people across the planet. What woke you up? Oh, I, I, I've been uh, Anthony Gregory when I was fifteen. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, Anthony, Anthony, Antigone, and me basically used to hang out um, in high school and basically talk politics. I've, I've been talking politics since I was fifteen, fourteen. Hey, okay. join the club. But I did not. But I was a minarchist. It it was actually Ron Paul that made me an anarchist. <laughs> Ron Paul makes everyone an anarchist. <laughs> yeah, the the minarchist that makes everyone an anarchist. The constitutionalist that makes everyone want to throw the constitution in the trash. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Well, yeah. yeah. A lot of the time, so it's, when it, it's when you're uh, when you agree with the person you're talking to that your views change. No, here, here's a question. Right, open. Did someone he, post that? Someone posted something like that. Yeah. Online. Here's an yeah. open question. Before uh, Ron Paul passes away. Do you think he's going to come out of the closet as an anarchist? Um, I think he said. I think uh, he's he, already said he's a voluntarist, but he, people don't under, really given, understand what given, that means. He's given he's given nods here or there to various things, but no, he's never going to come out of the closet. Now, before Ron Paul passes away, do you think he's going to come out of the closet as a gay man? No, <laughs> that'd be that'd be <laughs> no. safer for him okay, to do no. though. More importantly, do you think before Ron Paul passes away, is he going to come out of the closet as a lizard? <laughs> what is he spraying? <laughs> what is he spraying? That's what I want to know. Uh, uh, who was it who died? And he, his last words were, "I killed the bank." That was Andrew Jackson, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. He also killed a bunch of brown people because he fought the Fed. He also <laughs> killed a bunch of brown people. <laughs> yeah. Again, who hasn't these? Do you days? think Ron Paul's gonna? What his last words are gonna be? I killed the state. It'd be pretty legit. 
I smash the state. Oh, I smash the state. He, he would be more personal. His his victim is de- his enemy has definitely always been the Federal Reserve. Mm, yeah, you could say the same thing, right? Yeah, you know all about that whole thing. I got into some argument with some conservators online today, as usual, and they were all like arguing. They were like, <laughs> some gun to foreign policy, and then they're oh, you hate America, and then I was like, look. You have a picture of Ronald Reagan as as your profile picture. <laughs> he was so non-interventionist compared to this stuff. He would never stand for any of this stuff. You know, neither Ron Paul, neither were the founding fathers, none of this kind of stuff. And you're basically embracing Obama's foreign policy. And that that, that just like blew their they could not get their heads around that that these <laughs> these you must like that Obama. I'm like, "No, well you're the guys who love his foreign policy. I'm really for like the Reaganite thing." Or, you know, I curse him for more than that, but that was just like the the, anyway, it, well, most, con- most was, conservatives yeah. and liberals pretty much agree on the exact same thing when it comes to government and you know the and well, in regards to foreign policy and, uh, and there being a government and what they do, they just disagree on the like the minutia of stuff. Yeah, uh, conservatives. Yeah, no, conservatives are for a strong national defense, and which, Democrats which is, are which, not, which is a murky concept. They're for they're for uh, uh, control on the border, immigration. I I. Yeah, there was some there was some liberty people doing I'm that s- the I'm, other day, that, and that I was I off. wish I went down to that. That you cannot be libertarian yeah. and be for border I, security. I, that no, you well, you have the saying, right to don't free say travel. Border security, but Bo- to like close borders, yeah, to close border, yeah, to illegal. And like things. no, this entire planet's my homeland. I don't give a shit well, where that's I go. The thing. To. You own this entire. Planet I don't own sir? it. It's my homeland. I'm gonna say it's my property. But this entire planet is my homeland, this, regardless of it in North America or Africa or anywhere. I should be f- able to freely travel around yeah, this entire I, planet. I mean, I'm sorry, but, like, I, I can't take conservatives seriously when, like, the, the scope of government has increased every time there's a conservative in office. I, and and, and, well, yeah. and, and, and they get impl- and the, each time they get applauded. Like, uh, John Stewart, I remember when uh, George Bush, it was like, I don't know, maybe his second term. And Jar- uh, I forget who uh, John Stewart was talking to. Like, maybe... Uh, Maybe Dick Cheney, maybe somebody, but he literally said, like, uh, it, commenting on what was going on with the Bush administration. He's like, "You guys are like Democrats on steroids." <laughs> and like, why did they get? Re- I don't understand why Democrats hated Republicans because, like, they're doing what you want because of the cultural difference. I know, I know. It's, it's not all, their. It's, it's not their team. It's, it's all, not their tribe. No, I know that. It's not because they're white no, and they no, hate no, gays no, and brown no, no. people. It's not just. It's not just team stuff. It's cultural. It's cultural. Okay, California is a very much. And they tend to be very democratic, right? You know, like I, I you know, um, um, you know, that's why, like, like I'm, I'm gay. H- which party should I run with? I mean, people are gonna say, well, you should run as a Democrat. Yeah, right? and it's if you cl- don't, it's it has like nothing you're a to traitor. do. With, it has nothing to do with policies. That has to do with cultural, cultural allegiance. Which I think is very funny. And and culturally, I'm on the left. Yeah, it's funny the way you I, see. Bernie uh, Man's my goddamn mecca. <laughs> yeah, there and that's go. that's the beautiful thing about the libertarian movement. Not so much the libertarian movement, but us porcupines here, is there's people from all over. There's a lot of heated discussion and debate and fighting sometimes over the inherent cultural differences between these people who've all embraced the exact same philosophy. And like you know, there's a bunch of like there's a bunch of people, myself included, who work hand in hand with with uh, organizations like Americans for Prosperity that are. You know, partially. Coke, Coke exactly. Brothers. Coke and brothers. Then, Coke money. And then there's a uh, here. Coke brothers. Say it one more time. Coke brothers. Coke brothers. Coke brothers. Coke brothers. Coke brothers. This is gonna be TV gold right there. Anyway, so there's so <laughs> that's just the end of your campaign. <laughs> <laughs> so there's so obs- so there's some people that are so obsessed in Coke brother hating that again we get along all the time until we start mentioning that and then and then it's this. I love. I think it's a beautiful thing that people from different cultures can mesh together here. Like then there's like people who are really uh, conservative Christians who are here and mm-hmm. participating. And then there's people who are, you know, flamingly the opposite. And it's like, <laughs> it's like I don't care. I, I personally don't give a crap because we're all, you know, we're all brothers and sisters and whatever other terms hey you want to use. Man, we all love each other. Just now, take down your pants. Exactly. Although I'm not. Yeah, I don't do care that. what anyone does. Just don't uh, force me to go along. <laughs> like, be free. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Don't don't make me do no paleo diet because I won't. 
Yeah, I wouldn't do it either. Oh. I did Atkins I love my bread. a little bit. Dude, I did some I did some grilled uh, peaches uh, with coconut coconuts uh, milk and uh, almonds. Or not almonds, uh, walnuts on it. It was pretty delicious. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. I just want that and some like bread and shit too. Yeah, I did, I did Atkins for six months, and I I miss bread so much. I had I know, to get bre- off of bre- that. Bread, bread, I love bread. Bread is bread is a genius genius thing. I know. Yeah, I don't know I how know. you do it for so long. Do, don't, do you have, have a cheat I, meals I, I, or I have, something? I have a weekly cheat day. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, your infidelity. You, was that Wednesday hump day? I know. I don't believe in the dogma stuff. I I have a week weekly cheat day. Good. You should. That's cool. Well, you know what? I really want to thank you for coming out and exposing yourself to the whole world. I mean, the 28 people who listen. <laughs> <laughs> and joining oh. us as the first person to be on this show with our brand spanking, Ash spanking new co-host, Andrew, who is now going to be a permanent addition to the show. You're the first Shire one. dude. Yeah, man. You're the first <laughs> one. To like, you're our you're breaking pig. me in, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're breaking him in. Breaking in, the new break him in gently, though, go. will you? Okay. <laughs> well, well, gentle than hard, gentle than hard, gentle than hard. Where can there's, there's uh, we'll rhythm. work out the work safe it. words after the show? <laughs> 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 Where can people find all your content or anything that you're doing, who that you are, and whatnot, um, including your candidacy? Uh, you, sh- you can go to notesforrobots.com, or uh, I tend to blog on robot-notes.tumblr.com. Now, anything about your candidate website or anything like that? Uh, that is not up. Uh, honestly, I'm going to be really lazy about it. I'm going to have a Facebook page and probably a, a Tumblr page. Andre for New Hampshire. <laughs> That's <laughs> that where I'm going to put Sounds like a party. I'm pretty lazy. I got to get on Tumblr. I don't do Tumblr. Either. I don't Tumble either. Is there enough Liberty people I, on I there? Roll, is there, is there a, no. a market for it? No, it's it's more it's more visual oriented. It's like more, Pinterest. I'm all over the Pinterest. More, more visual oriented and a lot of social justice people there. Oh, then maybe I should get in there and spread my uh, spread my love of liberty. Spread in your there. liberty seeds. I mean, I have a couple. Place. I know a couple of uh, liberty leading people on on. Uh, okay. On Tumblr. All right. Well, you can find. Well, first off, Shire Dude, where they can find you? ShireDude.com. There you go. All right. Even though you don't have a website, it just goes to your channel. But nonetheless, <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't insult him. No, no, it, it, it's good. It's good. He has a URL. That's great. Hey, hey, you have a volunteerist rebel. Volunteerist. No, I don't. I just use Rebel Love Show. Oh, I know you have your own. You have, like have twenty the, the websites. Desert, I know. I have twenty and a half now. Yeah. So desertlinks.com. Find all my crap there. You can find all our stuff at rebelloveshow.com. You really have a good, good job of corralling all the ones. We're gonna, you we're gonna do us. a good job. Keep updating that. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, we. every couple, Yeah, we. Uh, hey, we. Uh, both of us have. This and guy hasn't what? though. Not yet. Not uh, yet. This guy. This and guy. guess well, guess what? Derek J is also blogging for us on that site. Oh, so nice. now he's he's, he's adding already, his he's key, already he's got something key perspective. He's got something up there already. He's right? got many. He's probably got more stuff this week than we do. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, he's just and so we're moving it right along. It's going to be the one one website to go to to figure out what the hell's happening here in the Shire. So rebelloveshow.com, guys. All right, we're out. Peace. 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 Peace.